All right. So as I mentioned, there is guest packages and then there's membership packages. So for people that just newly joined the club. So for example, I got something from Craig that they're using at the Business Club Frankfurt. And what they have is they really have a package. They didn't consolidate it into one form, which I think can be nice, but doesn't necessarily have to be. It can also be several documents, depending on what you want to achieve. Um, so one part of their guest package is, of course, the membership form. They also have the SEPA mandate, so you can sign up and they can easily collect the fees because they're a registered club, like Eingetragener Verein. And then their guest package, I'm just going to pull it up and show it to you what they have, is three more documents. And... So here we go. I'm going to share my screen. And I'm moving you over. So in their guest package, they have a one page that is very targeted to their own club with why this club the benefits of Toastmasters, what you need to know, like when they meet and so on, what are the, the dues, how does it work with renewals and some contact details, and then how to become a member short introduction in few steps. Super. Then the other documents they have is one of the official Toastmasters flyers with how Toastmasters works, what's in it for you, and how to build um, how to build a better you with Toastmasters. So I think that's also one of the flyers that is really helpful in that sense. And Kushi, I'm happy to send them all over to you as well. Oh, that's great, thank you. <laughs> do, they, they, do they have these in paper or are these digitally sent? I you know? am not sure, but for so the one that I just showed you beforehand, this one, um, it says 2019, so I guess by that time they were still using it in person. Right. But I think it can be used just as well online, depending on whether you want to send it out by email or through the Zoom chat. I would, so personally, but that's my personal opinion thinking about it, if I would send it through the Zoom chat, most probably I would combine it all in one document because then it's easier to distribute it and to for the guest to download it. If you send it by mail, I think there is no larger pros or cons in having it all in one document or having se several documents. Okay. What do you think? It, it, worth considering. Uh, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be afraid they wouldn't open, click on all the links if um, we sent it by email and had it no. as attachments. So I like the <laughs> Zoom idea a lot. Exactly. Yeah. And then is they have your, some, is, yeah, sorry, Marcus. Sorry, is it your experience too that people don't read? <laughs> Unfortunately it's, true. But uh, when we had the manuals like the CC and the CL, it never ceased to amaze me that people join a club and they, hand, they are handed two manuals and they read one and they neglect the other one. There's, and well, I never, yeah, I received it. I did receive it, but I never had a look at it. So what? 50% of the new information. Yeah, I think we have to be careful about how much information we send them because there's a decreasing Absolutely. chance of their reading it the more we send. Um, so this yes. information on pathways, it might be a little early to do that for a guest, but it might be very appropriate for a new member. I agree, especially if you look at it, it has 66 pages, so I think it's quite extensive. <laughs> so in general, I would say maybe it makes sense to have this first page with the overview and telling them there's 11 different pathways that you can choose from, but that's really targeted on what you're looking for, but no further information on how exactly they're structured and so on, because as you mentioned, they will not read it anyways, but giving them a first glimpse at what is our educational system structured like and that they can really 
deep dive into one of these 11 um, sections might be interesting for them. Yeah. So now that we went through the documents that they have as part of their guest package, is there anything that you, when you consider it, that you would add or that you would think that it would be helpful for guests? Well, Frederica had met, mentioned a document that they have that shows, or a splendid speaker she developed for them that shows the different roles in the meeting and what mm -hmm. that will do for you. That might be really a, a, a an eye catcher for uh, our guests as well as members. So I would consider that. Definitely. Yeah, I think here we can discuss whether it's better in the guest package or in the new member package, maybe even both because, well, it doesn't hurt to have it twice since people might not go through all the details anyways in yeah. the first instance. I think for new members, uh, following up on Marcus's comment, orientation face to face through a Zoom meeting, whether that's one on one or with a group of new members, I think was far more effective than sending anything out because chances are they're not going to look at it until they, um, unless they've hit an impasse someplace and they say that information must be someplace, I'll go back and look for it. Um, but it's the orientation se section that where you can really take people through things and outline the benefits of each of the, you know, easy speak benefits of pathways and show them how to do it. And they'll remember that more than anything we send to them. Definitely. I think the only thing that worked out quite well in my own club is what we did when we were meeting in person, we would put the registration form on every seat of a guest yeah. and told them, feel free to take it along and then bring it next time or whenever you feel ready to join. So that was kind of telling them, we wish you to join without like putting it in their face. And I think that worked quite well. And a lot of people brought it back or asked for it in the next meeting again, because they forgot it back home. Um, online, we have not been as effective using that technique and just putting it in the chat and asking them to take it back home or take it for consideration and bring it back. I think that's something that we might give a try. But that would go out with the guest package. Exactly. Yeah. Well, as I, like in my own club, we didn't have a guest package, but our guest package was only the registration form and it worked quite well in in-person meetings. I think online, mm -hmm. it might be helpful to have more of a guest package because we might not get a chance to guide them as well as in-person meetings if they're not there for the orientation section, for example. How often would you follow up on a guest then? If you, let's say we're doing this by email after seeing them at a meeting and we send them the Toastmasters flyer and the one page, this is our club and why you should join us and the application. And we might see them at another meeting or maybe not. Would you follow up again then? And at what interval? Anybody having opinions on that? Go for it. I think uh, <clears throat> once is absolutely minimum. It's logic. I think twice is fine. If the first contact is maybe in the first 24 hours, that will be great. Maybe on the next day as a nice reminder and thank you for being our guest. And then maybe depending on how he or she reacts, second one for the next meeting or for the meeting after that. Um, and there is a plan B, which is for me pl plan A, uh, A plus, uh, which is to become friend with this person. That someone from the board, the president, club founder, or someone becomes friend. So you can write uh, so many times as you wish. Mm. That's ideal. Yeah. I'm VP membership of a club that's currently being founded. And um, we immediately um, add them after uh, the meeting on EasySpeak. So they get an EasySpeak account right away. 
as really a guest important. or personal a as a guest yeah so whenever there somebody signs up as a guest in the guest list they get an easy speak account so they get into system notification but it's not a personal follow up that I'll that I'll do mm -hmm. you so clubs should... also use uh, groups on telegram or whatsapp and have a club for uh, friends a uh, group for friends of the club where everyone can join and read automatically invitations and news and questions. The big danger is if you have many groups, for example, board members and then friends, it could be chaotic. So you need to decide which structure fits best for your club. I like that idea of adding visitors to easy speak quite quickly, although then your guest list becomes really long, I imagine, in easy speak. But if they if and when they become members, then they're already introduced to easy speak, uh, which is a real advantage. Exactly. Yeah. I think the they, only thing, sorry, Marcus, go ahead. Yeah, they, they hardly ever sign into easy speak, but once they're in easy speak, they get the uh, invitation every week because we send out an invitation a couple of days prior to the meeting they get um each and every one and you don't have to have another list so all the the membership or potential members um administration is in easy speak yeah that's that's the advantage of it yeah i think the downside of easy speak is that the mails don't look very nice and it's a it seems a lot like mass emails so i think that's something that we really need to consider what do we want to achieve with it of course it's easy because it's automated because we're sending out the reminders through easy speak anyways on the other hand if you send them nicely written personal emails it might motivate them a bit more but yeah. it also looks like a vintage fax from other times <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, so may i ask a question how, how you do it with the invitations because in the clubs I'm in, it's the Toastmaster's task to write the invitation a couple of days prior to the meeting because then he can add his theme or her theme and give it a personal note. So it's, of course, a mass email sent through a mailing system, but the, um, the text can be very personal, it's like friends and members, um, we're looking forward to an exciting meeting, blah, blah, blah. Definitely, I just think that the format that comes out of Easy Speak doesn't look too yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So when I was, for example, VP membership for Dustmasters, I sent them from a, like not my personal mail account. We had mail accounts for the club for each of the officer roles. So I, as a VP membership with VP membership at Dustmasters.org, was sending an email to our guests, inviting them, and also adding the meeting theme and so on. And as I mentioned, it's just about the format. Some people might just not care, but I personally don't like the easy speak format too much in the mails. Yeah, yeah um, talking about easy speak, I don't like easy speak at all, but I love it because it's so practical. You can do almost anything you want with it once you know how. And it's, I, I always insist not to fill another list. So it should be done in easy speak. If it's not done in easy speak, it shouldn't be done at all. <laughs> so apart from, from treasurer role. True. Kushi, any further questions on the guest package? No, I think that pretty much answers it. Do I have know? a question for Kushi, if I may. Just one quick question for, from my side to Kushi. Would you like to receive the files by mail or through Zoom chat? I think I prefer it through mail so I can send it directly on then to Wonderful. VP Man. Then I will do it that way and now Stefan can ask his question to Kushi. <laughs> Thank you very much, Katarina. Dear Kushi, you are a member for many years and you're also a very successful contestant for many years. Uh, in which moment you decided to sign at Toastmasters? And what was the final reason? Conversation, email, evening, or whatever. 
Okay, you have to realize that it took me 30 years from the first time I heard about Toastmasters till the time I joined. Wow. <laughs> okay. The wow. first time I heard about Toastmasters, I was um, in a community play uh, theater group and we were doing a play and two of the members had just gotten their real estate licenses and they joined Toastmasters in order to become better presenters. And I said, to, they said, oh, you got to do this. You got to do this. It's really great. And I said, are you crazy? Talk, you know, write my own speeches. I'm an actress. I, you know, use the words of the, the, the playwright. And then uh, many, 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 many years later, say 25 years later or 28 years later, I was teaching business English in Berlin. And in one of the teacher's newsletters, somebody mentioned Toastmasters. And I thought, hmm, I've heard about that before. I'm going to think about that again. And then finally, the class that I was teaching, one of the classes I was teaching was so advanced that I wanted to give them something that they could use beyond, you know, that would stretch them a little bit more. And I suggested maybe Toastmasters, but I couldn't suggest it to them until I tried it myself. So I went to a meeting and this was at the time that, I'm gonna, let's see, Johanna Ruhr, uh, now Ruhr, but before she had a different name. Anyway, Johanna Mailman, was taking her first year as president of, of Mercury Toastmasters. So I was there when she had her first meeting. And I remember being called up, asked if I would take a table topic. And I said, no, I'm not ready yet. And regretting it immediately. I went back at the end of her term, took a table topic and signed the application that night. Wow. <laughs> so that so if I someone cool. asks you, why should I join or what to do next? Please tell this story. <laughs> I don't know if we want people to wait 30 years before they join Toastmasters. <laughs> but it makes me very optimistic. It's never too late. And I tell people, you never know when that person that you talk about Toastmasters to is going to do it. You sow a seed. And that seed might germinate in a week or a month or 30 years. But they're out there. So whether you put it in at one of your professional newsletters as this is working for me, it could work for you, or you mention it in conversation. And anytime we mention Toastmasters, it sows a seed and, um, and sometimes it germinates and we get to see it, you know? And uh, some people see a small flower and some people see a wood. Right, <laughs> the whole forest, just yes, right. Forest, mm. yeah, sorry. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. So, mm. what kind of flower am I, Stefan? Wow, what a difficult question. You are, um, actually, it's an easy question. I hope it's the same word in English uh, the bamboo flower, where uh, you have to seed it and then to wait very, very long time maybe about 30 years. And then in one or two years, it happens like uh, to grow 10 meters or what. That's a great image. I like it. <laughs> All right. So I guess we have closed the topic of guest package. Would you like to go into the topic of membership package or what, do, what would be of your preference, Kushi? As I said, I feel that our membership package is really our orientation session. Okay, wonderful. And I would really love to see that everybody did that. I don't, how do, how, do you get feedback on clubs who do an orientation or uh, do they rely on sending information, people doing their own research? I think we have done, done it in many different ways and every way worked okay, I would say. Um, I think so a couple of ways that we took is yes, we send out information. Um, we also had a time when we had additional educational sessions and workshop before our meeting. So we would meet an hour before our meeting and whoever was interested and did have time could come for a really, it could be an educational, it could be anything that would not be part of our normal meeting, but it would also give us time to really like navigate new members into our club and how everything works. 
I think that was a nice approach, but it was a very time consuming approach, of course. And then I think the approach that we took most of the time is that we are really keen in assigning mentors, not in the sense of mentor in the first place, but in the sense of that the mentor takes over this navigating role in the beginning. And then also like supports the new member in the first couple of speeches. And sometimes there is really a mentor relationship that grows out of it but sometimes it's also just a navigating guide for the first couple of weeks and months at Toastmasters. Uh -huh. Yeah, the key word here is onboarding mentoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's something we've done mentoring in the sense of speech development uh, and leadership development sometimes, but this onboarding mentoring is something we haven't done. Maybe that would make it easier for a VP membership who finds him or herself strapped for time. Exactly. What we've been doing recently in the Lüneburg Club, where we have the problem that we are not yet chartered, so we don't have that many experienced members, so basically it's a founding team, we had an online session. So all the new members who had joined the last two months or so got the opportunity for an online session and they got um, an insight into easy speak, how to sign up for speeches, how to sign up for the icebreaker, and uh, how to um, have a glimpse into pathways, although the club's not chartered, so they can't really get access to the online pathway system. But um, yeah, just one session, so either by the VP ad or by the VP membership, um, in having helping people getting a, a, a look on the different tools that there are available to them. I just have a question about pathways in a new club. You say they don't have access to the pathway system. I thought they had access to either level one or to certain speeches. It's yeah, level that's... one in PDF format. Ah, yeah, okay. exactly. That's why with pathways, uh, pathways, the system of having a host club became more and more common because then you can really stretch the chartering process as long as you need with your new members really getting access to all the resources they might need. In addition to that, you win a lot of committed uh, experienced members from the host club and they can help when you need. For example, when you have uh, one evening with <coughs> to fill the roles, your experienced host uh, members can help. All right. Kushi, is there anything else that we can do something good for you? I am so grateful that the three of you came together to help me with the idea of membership uh, materials and guest packages. This is great. No, I don't have any other questions. Well, happy to help. And if there's only one person, we will do a very dedicated session for that one person and make sure that this one person gets everything he or she needs, in this case, you. Yeah. <laughs> will this video be available someplace where I can then access it for, or, or send the link to my VP membership? Definitely. I will just stop the recording now. <laughs>